What's up everybody, welcome back to Diesel Creek. My name's Matt. This beautiful greenish blue behemoth right here is a 671 Detroit. And it's uh, a very special one to me, and I'll show you why. So, I am by no means a Detroit guru, but uh, Detroits are made by General Motors, or they were rather, I guess they still are, but they're uh, quite a bit different these days. This is a two-stroke diesel engine this is a two-stroke diesel engine which makes it have that beautiful iconic sound these things used to be ubiquitous in all sorts of marine applications buses heavy equipment trucks over the road all kind of stuff super super common engine back in the day but they're getting to be less and less common so I had the opportunity to buy this one, I think like two, maybe three years ago now. And I have just been sitting on it, waiting for a, uh, a rainy day. Now, it's not actually raining today, but it does seem like a good day to finally play around with this thing and see if we can't get it to run. I have never heard it run, but I picked this thing up for, I think, 250 bucks if memory serves. And this is not an engine that would have been in a big truck. This one belonged to a fire suppression system in a local steel manufacturing plant. And all this thing would do, I believe, I don't know for sure, I was never in the plant, but I believe it was just hooked up to a big water pump. And if uh, duty called, it would just pump a crap load of water at a very high rate. So, consequently, because this thing was in a, uh, an emergency kind of role, luckily they never needed it. So it's a little bit like your spare tire. You, uh, you got one because you, uh, you might need it, but you pray you don't ever need to use it. So this thing has 38 hours on it. And I'm guessing that this engine is probably from the, uh, the early 70s maybe. And that's 38 original hours. Like I said, I've never heard it run. I've never even tried to turn it over. It's been sitting out here for, like I said, two years now, I think. And I've never heard it do anything, but it's all covered up. And it should, in theory, fire up. Detroit's are pretty resilient, so I'm pretty, pretty hopeful about it. Now, like I said, and the title probably said as well before you clicked on the video, this is a 671 series Detroit. So the 6 indicates that it's 6 cylinders. The 71 indicates that it's 71 cubic inches per cylinder. As I said before, I'm no Detroit guru, but the easy way that I use to tell the 71 series from the 53 series, which look pretty similar, um, is the valve covers. That's the quickest way for me to tell. If they got these big, ugh, well, I can't do it right now. 
<laughs> theoretically, there you go. You're supposed to be able to loosen these by hand and open up the valve covers. Um, the 71 series have those, like uh, quick screws, and the 53 series, which I believe is older, um, and would have been 53 cubic inches per cylinder, they have pan head screws down around the valve cover, and that is what's in the big chicken back there, the Bantam crane that we have. That has a 353 series Detroit in it, so that's a three cylinder, 53 cubic inch. This is a six cylinder, 71 cubic inch, so quite a bit bigger engine here. This little sucker is heavy. I, I'm going to say it probably weighs almost 3,000 pounds the way it sits. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited to tear into this thing. So it's sitting here on a skid, and it's not really a quote unquote usable engine for something like a truck or a heavy equipment application. What are you going to do with this thing, Matt? Maybe at the end of the video, I'll, uh, I'll tell you guys what I think I want to do with this thing. I'm not set in stone yet, but I have a really good idea of what I want to use this thing for. And I think it'll be a really cool, fun project for the channel. Anyways, like I said, I've never played with this thing. I've never tried to crank it over. I've never even seen it rotate. Nothing. So let's go over this thing and see if we can't get this thing running today. So I was just giving this thing a hard look over here. And this is a uh, service sticker from the last time that it was uh, serviced, obviously, when it was in, in use. And I don't know if you guys can make it out right there. But I think that date says 3 something, uh, maybe 11, 3 11 16 so this thing was taken out of service in 2016 and it's just been sitting ever since as far as i know but i guess the first thing we should do is check all the fluids i mean i think i remember some antifreeze spilling out of it when i moved it here um it doesn't have a traditional cooling pack on it like a uh, like a truck engine would i don't know if this thing had a radiator or if it was some sort of specialty system that the mill had um, so we're gonna have to really investigate the cooling system here and see what we can do. Or it kind of might be like a self-contained system even, because there's like, no, there's no bottom radiator hose. I'm gonna have to study this a bit, guys. I've never seen anything quite like this thing. Well, yeah, look at that. That's very interesting here. Check this thing out, guys. Never seen anything like this. You'll have to drop a comment down below, or maybe I might even Google it and let you guys know before the end of the video here. But there is some sort of a cooler going on down in this chamber here. There's little fins. It's almost like it's a small miniature radiator right on the front of the engine, which is interesting. And there is still coolant in it, and it looks nice and green, so that's a good sign. This thing was, I'm going to guarantee this thing was very well taken care of. So, I don't think we'll need to worry about that antifreeze. I think it's probably fine. It just needs topped off. There's hoses here, some lines that are missing. I don't know if those went to a bigger radiator or what that really is there. Like I said, I've never seen anything. I'm going to have to do some Googling. Let's check the engine oil here. And if memory serves, I don't think it has any in it. The guy I bought this thing off of was a buddy of mine. Where in the world is the dipstick? But the guy I bought this thing off of was a buddy of mine. He actually worked at the mill where this thing was in service at. And when they removed it from service, he saw it sitting there and somehow he acquired it. Um, but this thing has an oil drain line that runs out of the, out of the oil pan right down here into the side of the, uh, the framework. And he said he picked it up with his skid steer and didn't see this thing and busted it off. And uh, so he fixed it, but he told me he never, you know, put 10 gallons of oil back in it. So I think we're going to have to uh, do that today. But I still need to find a dipstick. Uh, there's got to be one. All right, I found the dipstick. It was staring me in the face, of course. Yeah, just like I thought. No oil, just a teeny little drip on the end of the dipstick there. So we need to get some oil in this thing. And because this engine's like brand new, we're not going to cheap out on that. Normally, when I'm reviving something, especially something that takes up so much oil, you really hate to go dumping like 10 gallons of oil in it when you don't even know if the thing's going to run. But I'm pretty confident that we should be able to get this thing running, provided it turns over. Actually, we should check that before we get into oil. But yeah, let's get to that. Yeah. 
right, time for the all important make or break test here. I'm gonna throw the wrench on the snout of the crankshaft here and see if this thing actually turns over. Like I said, I was told that it did when I bought it. I bought it from a friend. I would hope he wouldn't lie to me. And it's also been sitting here for two years out in the weather. I had it covered up as best I could, but you know, these things happen. So uh, cross your fingers, dot your eyes. This is the most drama you'll ever see me drum up in one of these videos. Will it turn? Oh, yeah. It was kind of stuck a little bit there. It took a, took a lot of effort to get it moving. Oh, man. It's still very stiff. Go back the other way here. Yep. It turns. <laughs> awesome. Right, I think that's a full 360 we just made. Awesome. Yeah, this thing turns over a full 360, so we should be good to uh, start diving into this thing a little heavier. We're starting to get sprinkled on. I just checked the radar, and we've got a big blob of rain coming in, so we're going to move this party indoors. I'm so sweet, I can melt. All right, got the exhaust uncovered here. It all looks good down in there. This is not water, it's that like, uh, I don't know how to describe it. Sometimes when uh, water sits on some metal like that and it gets kind of scaly, it, as it dries out over time, it leaves that uh, shiny stuff behind. Anybody that knows metallurgy and could explain that to me in the comments would be uh, much appreciated because that's a unique phenomenon I'm just now thinking about. All right, so let's see what we need to get this thing running now. We're gonna have to get a fuel supply hooked up we're going to have to verify that the injector rack is not stuck because that is a common issue with these Detroits when they sit. Uh, the rack will stick and then when you go to fire them up, one or all of the injectors will be hung wide open and uh, you'll fire it up and it sounds like the gates of hell are opening up. It sounds like this thing's running away. It's not, it's just a full throttle issue. But easy to unstick those so we'll have to pull the valve cover off, we'll have to check those. We're going to have to get some batteries. We're going to have to take these air cleaners apart and make sure they're not full of uh, critter nests or anything like that. We checked the cooling system. There is some coolant in it, and the way this thing's set up is set up for like a marine application, or in our case, it was uh, like a standalone, like a gen set type setup. So there is coolant in it. Um, we could run it for a while, but we can't run it for like an hour. You know, we'd be getting things too hot the way it sets. If we wanted to run it for a long, long time, we're going to have to put an actual radiator on this thing with a fan on it, and that uh, would get us a lot longer runtime ability. And of course, we checked that dipstick and there's nothing on it, so we better get some oil in this thing. Now, as you guys saw, it didn't register that there was anything on the dipstick. However, there can still be a bit of oil in this thing, so we might as well start completely fresh and drain out whatever's in here. Yep, there's a little bit left. I don't know how well you guys can see that, and the oil has definitely been run, but it's not, not even very dark, so the oil that was in here was probably fine. I'm certain that these uh, oil filters have been replaced as well, so we're not going to worry about those right now either. Because this thing was set up as an emergency backup kind of thing, Anytime you have a gen set, or like in this case a fire pump, anything like that, the, there's a maintenance contract, a company will come in and they will fire this thing up like every, I don't know, six months let's say, and they'll let it run for a little bit and then they'll shut it back down and then every, every year or every two years they'll come in and swap all the filters and fluids, um, even though it doesn't need done, they do it anyways, just so this thing is 100% ready to go in the event of emergency. So, 
with 38 hours on the clock, even if these were the original oil filters from this thing, uh, they're probably just fine. So we're not gonna worry about those. We're gonna put some fresh oil in this thing and make it uh, ready to run. All right, so as I said before, we're basically dealing with a brand new engine here. You definitely don't wanna cheap out on the oil. Put some junk in there. So you guys have seen me use it plenty of times in the past. Going with Rotella T5, I've run Rotella in just about everything these days. And I think the T5 gives you a really nice blend between the synthetic and conventional properties. And these, uh, these old diesels really seem to like it. The semi-synthetic blend really gives you the nice uh, added benefit of the long oil change intervals, so you're not having to change it super frequently. It deals better with high temperature situations, which is great in the modern diesels as well. And all in all, oil is a lot cheaper than parts, so if you try to take care of your stuff, hopefully you don't have nearly as many issues down the road if you're running quality stuff the whole life of the engine. This thing has never seen a hard day's work, so. Best to break it in with the good stuff. Looks like we're about a gallon low. All right, we got some good oil in this thing. Let's pop these air cleaners off of here and see what we got going in there. These are oil bath air cleaners. So as you can see right there, it says oil level. And that there's supposed to be oil in here, and that helps catch particulate and dust and whatever coming in through the filters. Huh. Well, it's not clean looking oil, but it's oil. Now that oil obviously doesn't look super clean, but uh, it'll still do what we need it to do. Basically how these work, the intake air has to get drawn down through the oil and then up into the filter and then down through the center section here. And the oil grabs up any dust and dirt as it comes through. So. If the thing runs, then we'll worry about changing that out. But just for our purposes to try to get the thing running, that's not going to hurt anything. We're good. No critters are in there, and it has oil, so that's the big thing. Beautiful. Same case over here. The oil looks about the same. It's just got a little bit of water in it, but it's not bad at all. We'll, uh, we'll worry about that after we get this baby running. So now we're moving on to the fuel system here. We've got to be able to get fuel... There's two canister style fuel filters down here. This is your line in, and this is the return line to the tank from the injectors. I don't have anything with these special fittings on here, so I'm gonna have to try to take this elbow off of here and just use regular pipe fittings down here. Unfortunately, I think this thing was assembled in place. So they soldered all these connections here. There's one, two, three, four connections. I think they did that all in place because there's no way to unscrew it. There's no clearance. This thing hits the frame right there, so you'll never be able to turn it all the way out. So I'm going to grab the little torch there, and we're going to sweat this thing back off of here so that we can actually get this thing out. There we go. That wasn't too bad. There we go. So we just got to get a uh, nipple fitting with quarter inch pipe on it. We can hook a rubber line right up to that. Look at that. This is our return line. And it has had some ingress of some some bugs, I think. 
So the best thing we can do is take the return line off up here and just blow that out with the air compressor. Make sure that that line's good and clean. Well, that's what came out of that line. Nasty. Smells gross. But the line's clear now. Alright, let's get this temporary fuel tank plumbed in here. All right, we got the fuel tank hooked up there. Now all we have left to do is get some batteries, and then we gotta pop that valve cover off of there yet and make sure none of the injectors are stuck from setting. beauty right there nice and clean look at this I can't believe it not a single injector is stuck usually these Detroit's are notorious if they sit for more than a couple years the injectors will stick man these things are running perfectly no issues whatsoever so I think we're ready to fire this baby up. All right, we're ready for the smoke test here. I got the positive hooked up here to my jump pack. I don't know if the jump pack's gonna be enough to spin this thing over, but I don't feel like digging batteries out of something unless I have to. So we're gonna give this a shot first. <laughs> That's an awful big starter for this poor little jump pack, but she's impressed me before. Well, I don't hear anything arcing out. Nothing's on fire yet. I, I'm sure that I could probably sit here with a multimeter for three hours and figure out what all that switch gear does and all these wires here, but really they don't mean anything. I can bypass all that. So there's a, a few things going on here. We have the solenoid. I think this guy, these are like plungers right here. One of these might be a manual solenoid that I could crank this thing over with but besides that we have goofy stuff going on here with the governor this is some sort of a I don't know a solenoid maybe for oil pressure I don't know but this is the governor here this is an external governor and it has an electronic solenoid on top of it that runs the throttle here this is the uh, this is running the rack directly also a lot of these Detroits have a uh, blower shut off, so this thing right here, this is a solenoid that will close the air off to the engine. So when you shut it down, it does two things. When you hit the off switch, it probably let the rack come out to the shut off position, as well as close the air flapper here. So if we crank this thing over right now, I don't think we're going to get any air, because I think that's probably in the closed position. The last thing we have here is this is a, another throttle here up on the control panel and I haven't exactly figured out how this works yet but we got run we got stop and that's like the whole dial turning you can see there's like some detents down in here and I think that's what this spring loaded deal is yeah I think so but then also this knob here is like a fine adjustment maybe it says fast and slow on it so I gotta figure that thing out but basically that thing just turns a rod which runs along the head here down into the governor but uh, let's play around here and see if we can't get this starter to do something for us I think it's it's one of these things here this is nope not that guy oh oh 
Oh, it turned it over a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to need more juice. The old jump pack doesn't seem to turn that thing nearly fast enough. Let me scare up some batteries and see what we can do here. All right, I got some batteries connected now. I got the jump pack assisting those. Let's see if it turns over any faster. It's angry. And this thing likes the juice. Tip number three, contact. Oh yeah. Oh. It's even running the throttle in for me like I think it's supposed to. I just don't know about that flapper for the air intake. We're really close here now. Oh, we're so close to getting this thing fired up. I'm excited. All right, so we got two things I want to look for here before I hope that it fires up. I, I still haven't determined if this thing is naturally open or closed. Uh, I'm really not worried about it at the moment. I need to crank this thing over for a little bit first. I want it to bleed out fuel. So this has a manual lift pump on it here. And this will suck the fuel from the tank and push it all the way up into the head for these uh, injectors. So we need some fuel to come out of that thing and then I can tighten it back up. And the other thing I want to look for as I'm cranking on it, the mechanical oil pressure gauge here should come alive after we get some oil pressure built up. So I'm going to go ahead and crank it. I hope it doesn't just like pop right off because I actually don't want it to start until I know I have oil pressure. All right, you guys ready? Contact. Oh, yep, we got oil pressure coming up. That's good, awesome. No fuel yet though. Keep cranking on her. If those canisters are empty, which I wouldn't think they would be, but if they are, it'll take a little while to, uh, yeah, fill those up. Contact. Contact. Yeah, still not seeing any fuel coming out of there. I'm starting to wonder if the stinking fuel pump is dead. All right, I actually cracked the fitting loose right there at the mechanical pump now, so we can see if we're getting any progress at all. No fuel's dripping out as it is, so I have my doubts. But uh, anyway, contact. <laughs> I tried to give us some advantage here. I put the fuel tank up on a uh, crate here to give us a little bit of gravity feed down to the filters. I confirmed that we do have fuel right into the filter, uh, but we still got nothing up here to the pump and the tank gravity probably wouldn't push it all the way up there by itself. I don't think that I should have to do this. I'm pretty sure that this lift pump should be able to draw that fuel no problem. But um, being as the fuel system is completely dry, maybe I figure I'll give it a added little helping push here and uh, try to try to get the pump primed I guess so it doesn't have to do as much work because maybe the diaphragm in that thing is weak I think that's a diaphragm pump I really don't know but if that's the case it could be weak or something and uh, would not be having the lifting power that it should so I'm gonna just pressurize the, the fuel tank a little bit just enough to push the fuel up there there we go we got fuel plenty of it Jesus Christ. We didn't spill too much, and I got some pig mats down on the floor anyways. There we go, we're starting to push a little bit of fuel now. Must have just been the issue. Got those all tightened up. 
Now the next place we need to look for it, the next place we need to see fuel coming is out of this line up here on the head. Go on, Jack. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to put these batteries on charge and swap them out for a fresh set. All right, I'm paying my stupid tax in full today. I figured out why the fuel pump wasn't pumping. Turns out the petcock on this fuel filter here was open. So, you know, the fuel pump, the lift pump has to pull all the way through both filters. So with that petcock open, it really didn't have any uh, power to do any sucking. So now that that's shut, I bet it probably primes fuel right up there. I just don't know if we have the battery juice to make it happen today. Well, in the process of uh, figuring out our fuel issue, I discovered another issue here. These oil filters, you know, I can see they're gunky and dirty and they had some grime around them, but I just figured that was, you know, residual from oil changes over the years and whatever. But uh, she's leaking pretty good. There's a steady drip coming out of those. I had to throw this pan down here and a couple pig mats to catch all that mess. The only way to fix that is going to be to open up these canisters and replace the seal down there at the bottom. And to get another seal, probably just going to have to end up ordering a couple filters for it. So I think we're shut down until tomorrow, which is, uh, you know, 24 hours away from me right now for you guys. Here's your gasket. And it was not engaging the lip all the way out there. Yeah, that gasket's shot. You see that coming out of there? That's water. You know why it's in there? It's because that gasket, that gasket would failed. Well, actually, it didn't fail. It was misinstalled, and by sitting out in the rain for the last couple years, it allowed water to accumulate down in this filter housing. That's why we're only seeing it in the filter housing and not down in the oil pan. So that water getting in past the gasket here is why we've got sludge going on in this filter housing. You see that? That's what water does to oil. So it is actually a good thing that we had to take this off of here. Of course, if the gasket wasn't misinstalled, I guess we wouldn't need to be in here. Anyways, there's petcocks on the bottom of these filter housings that should allow this oil to drain out of here, but the goop that's in the housings is keeping it from draining. So, yeah, I'm gonna, trying to get these flowing again. All right, we got those filter housings cleaned out, looking a lot better now. And after I pulled the second one here, I also found that it was just barely hanging on there. I'll show you a good comparison here in a sec. All right, so you can see the uh, indent here around the outside edge of the rubber where the, where the canister clamped down on that ceiling ring. And over here, I mean, it just didn't catch it. That's all it was. It just barely glanced the edge and uh, was not sealing up. This one over here, about the same thing, but not quite as bad. It actually did manage to catch just a little bit on the outside of the edge. But uh, I went ahead and ordered some new filters so that we could get some new gaskets and we'll get those installed and uh, hopefully get this thing running. All right, we got our new filters here. I already took the liberty of throwing that one in. There's the, there's the culprit. That's what we need right there. Just a flat piece of rubber. I'm gonna make sure that thing's seated in there nicely. And uh, before we tighten the canister down, we'll make sure we got a nice even spacing around the canister. And that way we'll know we are catching all the rubber that we can. With these cartridge types, I can easily see how they manage to do that. You do have to kind of pay attention if you're just in a trance and changing filters for the 20th time in a day or something. You could very easily not pay attention and have that thing clamped down on the edge of the gasket. Now we're finally ready to crank this bad boy up. Man, I'm excited. Oh, I can't wait to hear this thing fire up. Okay, 
these batteries just finished charging. We got our oil filters reinstalled. Last thing we need before we can actually hopefully get this thing to fire up is we just need to get a little bit of fuel bleeding out of this line right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and crank it over. Contact. <laughs> And again, contact. Man, where is the fuel at? Now I'm getting irritated here. I spent that time cranking the engine over trying to get the fuel primed up. And you guys were over here watching. Didn't tell me anything about this thing start leaking oil again. You guys got to scream louder. Couldn't hear you. So, there's some more expensive new oil lost uh, i'm trying my best to collect it there i got the petcock open and i'm draining the filters back out i mean I, I don't understand that i even checked thoroughly looked like we had good contact on our gasket all the way around but she's still leaking so take that back off of there have a little look see okay i've been having one heck of a time getting this thing to bleed itself out the fuel system that is but i think i finally got it i see a drop of fuel up there on the uh the nut going into the head and crank this thing over a little bit more and hopefully we see some fuel come out there. Contact. Uh -huh. Yeah, baby, I see fuel coming out. All right, moment of truth here. I think she's finally ready to start up. Fingers crossed. Contact. I better check our oil filter, make sure it's not bypassing. Well, I don't see any oil dripping yet. I think it's gonna go, you guys ready? Contact! <laughs> oh, it's gonna go now. It's gonna go, it's priming out the injectors. As soon as it gets the air out of the lines, it's gonna run. And contact. <laughs> this thing sounds mean. Oh, I'm excited. Attempt number three, is it gonna stay running this time? Contact. Attempt number three, is it going to stay running this time? Contact! Oh, well, I think, I think our electronic uh, throttle is the only issue here. I'm going to run this thing manually and see if that's the issue here. I think as soon as I let off of the start button here, which is just a solenoid bypass, See, as soon as I let go, that thing's returning to the off position, so I think that's our problem. All right, I think we're gonna have it now. You ready? Contact.
right, so I've had it running for about 15 or 20 minutes now. Let's go ahead and uh, check on it, make sure it's not getting too hot or anything on us. I'd probably run it for a half an hour almost now. Eh, it's maybe going through about a gallon of fuel just shaking the tank around. And look at that, after a half an hour of running, now granted there's no load on it and I'm not sitting here revving it to the moon for long periods of time, but we didn't even hit 180 yet. And that's just with the coolant that's in the block and that little miniature cooler thing up there. I was talking to my buddy Lord Muck, which he knows quite a bit about these things. And he was saying that, you know, this is just a water to water cooler because this would have had a remote radiator set up on it, basically. So picture this thing somewhere in the bowels of a steel mill, ready to be kicked on and revved up at a moment's notice any time. Um, the, the radiator would not be ideal right here at the unit in a mill like that. There's, you know, you're not going to get adequate airflow to keep the thing cold. So they would have had those pipes that are up there by the cooler that I have capped off these guys they would have had those running somewhere uh, to an outside radiator a remote radiator and that would have been what kept that baby cool but it's got enough coolant in the block and in that small chamber up front there that it'll stay run cool running for as long as we're running it right now man this thing is awesome for 250 bucks, I'm awful happy. This thing runs beautifully. We got our oil leak taken care of apparently because nothing more is leaked out of it. So I'm happy about that. The only thing that's slightly concerning here is, yeah, that's fuel. So we got raw fuel coming out the exhaust. I don't know what the deal is with that. Maybe we do have an injector that's hanging up or something. It's not a ton, but it's more than I would think should be coming out because there shouldn't be any raw fuel coming out of the exhaust. So, I mean, I'll cut it some slack. It's been sitting most of its life. We'll uh, run a bunch of injector cleaner through it and hopefully that takes care of that. If not, we'll just reach out to area diesel service and get some injectors for this thing. I think they're pretty cheap because these engines used to be a dime a dozen. So there's plenty of parts available. So you might be asking yourself, Matt, you've had that engine for two years sitting there and you've got a thousand other projects to work on. Why did you choose right now to finally start working on that thing? Well, A, I have like ADD for projects. I, I can't stay focused on one thing too long. I get bored and then I just, I just stare at it. I don't end up working on it. So it's after a certain point, I physically can't make myself actually do anything to it. I'll end up just sitting there staring at a project, not accomplishing anything. Um, so it's actually more beneficial for me sometimes to just skip right over to another project and start something new because at least I'm moving forward, albeit not on the projects that I probably should be, but that's just the way my mind works. Reason number one. Now reason number two is because I ran into some guys that were super generous and actually hooked me up with some pony engines for the D8, but that's a whole nother video. They have some 671 Detroits, same as this. Point is, if I needed any parts for this thing, I could probably get them from them for a reasonable price. So I figured I'd drag this thing out here, give my mind something else to think about for a little while, and uh, start scheming up what exactly I want to build with this thing, because it's going to be cool. During the process, I figured I'd start accumulating a parts list. If I needed anything, I'd talk to these guys and see if they could help a brother out. But honestly, I think we're pretty good. I don't see anything real obvious that we need. All right. So what am I going to do with this thing? I kind of clued at the, earlier in the video. 
I kind of clued earlier in the video that I'd like to build something out of this unit instead of you know maybe using it to power something. Yeah, I guess it would be a pretty good engine for something like a drag line or a crane or something like that, but it's really not well suited to go into a truck per se. It's only 175 horsepower according to the uh, engine ID tags. You'd probably have to change a lot of things to make it work in a truck. You know, you definitely need a different exhaust manifold. That uh, water to water cooler set up on the front there would all have to come off. I'm not sure if the front cover is even the same as the truck engines or the bell housing. I think it is an SAE bell housing, but I could be wrong about that. I haven't checked it. But basically, I think this is kind of a cool time capsule uh, of an engine anyhow, kind of, you know, with the gauges on it and everything, all the tags and the original lettering and everything. I'm, I'm kind of irritated at the, uh, the labels here on the oil filters. These are like a water transfer um, decal. They're not, they're not uh, stickers. They're painted on there, or they were rather. Those came off uh, since I've had it. Those were in much better shape when I unloaded this thing, I believe. Um, but I just think it's a cool looking engine and I'd like to show off, you know, maybe take it up to the steam show or something, but I don't want it just sitting there on a trailer. I want it to be able to do something, serve some purpose. I don't want to just fire it up and let it idle and uh, cause noise and pollution for no reason. So we're going to give it a reason. So I want to build this unit into kind of like a, a Mad Max style go-kart buggy thing. And this is a very crude way to show this thing. But I want to get some sort of a tractor seat, perhaps, kind of uh, cantilevered out over top of the drive line here. I want to get some, some foot pegs down on the side of the engine. And I want you to kind of be straddling around the engine here. And then I'm going to rig up some sort of, I don't know, some sort of drive system underneath of this thing and make it to where it can drive under its own power. And we'll figure out some way to steer it and whatnot. I've got a cool radiator that I want to put up front there and tie into this thing and we'll figure out some cool way to route the exhaust and yeah, I got a lot stirring around in my head up there uh, and I'm sure that when the time comes to actually start working on this thing that there will be several videos and I'll let you guys have some input perhaps on how this thing uh, proceeds but basically I just want this engine to be almost like you're riding on top of the engine or straddling the engine almost. And I just think it would be a neat way to show off this engine and do something with it rather than just let it sit and rot away or get hidden inside of a crane or something or other. And whatever I do to it, you know, could just as easily be undone in the future if I needed this engine for something more purposeful, like a crane or a piece of equipment or something, and I needed the engine, you could strip it all back off and have your engine to go do whatever you needed to do. So I'm kind of torn between some big like uh, agricultural tires or something, you know, kind of this stubby little short, you know, I, I, don't, I, can't, I don't know that I have the words to describe exactly what I'm talking about, but, you know, just this goofy looking little weird go-kart thing. And maybe I could even rig up a blade on it or something uh, if I can make the drive line stout enough. Um, so one of the challenges immediately we would be facing is, you know, how do you take the power from the output shaft here and drop it down into a drive line? I don't want to make the thing any longer. In fact, I want the axles to kind of be underneath of the engine because I don't want it to be in something. I want the engine to be the framework of this machine. So those are a lot of challenges we're going to have to face in the future here. But basically I'm thinking about changing this out to a sprocket, running a uh, drive chain straight down into maybe the rear end of something else, and then we just have to figure out uh, a good way to make a clutch system on it. So this PTO that's on here, you know, with this output shaft, it's, it's not a clutch actually. It's, it has a cover on it that says clutch adjustment because it's the same cover that it would be if this was an over center clutch. Um, so if I could find an over center clutch that would bolt right up to this thing, that would be ideal. But as of yet, I have not been able to locate one. But like I said, those are just a few of the many, many challenges that will await us in the future when it comes time to actually start wrenching on this project. So, so in the meantime, I'm going to keep scouring the internet looking for uh, 
neat pieces to the puzzle here and find ways to overcome some of those problems to get us at least started in the right direction. I think I've got a lead on a really cool piece to the puzzle already, so I don't want to say too much. I don't have them in hand yet, so once I get them, uh, maybe we will get started on this thing. I just think it's a really cool project and I'm uh, pretty excited about it. Anyways guys, I think that about wraps this one up. It's probably turned into quite a long video just to get an engine started, but ultimately I think it was pretty rewarding. If you like this video, do me a big favor, hit the thumbs up button down below the video there. It really helps the channel out, it doesn't cost you guys a dime. These videos often get hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views, and yet only a tiny percentage of you bother to hit that little button. And I know you like it because you keep coming back. So if you would, do that for me. If, if you want to help to support the channel in another way, head on over to dieselcreek.com. Pick yourself up some sweet merchandise over there. We're working on some new merchandise over at the store. There's going to be new things funneling in here over the next month or two. We have St. Patrick's Day shirts up for sale right now at the store. So if you want to get your Irish on, celebrate the Diesel Creek way for St. Patrick's Day, get yourself a t-shirt over there right now. They are available for a limited time, and once they're gone, they are gone. So if you want one of those shirts, check it out. The link's down in the description of the store, dieselcreek.com. But anyways, guys, that's all I got. So as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.